Okay, so I have my paper taped off so I can have a border. I have my primary colors to start on my first one. I have a paper with a smudge, but still going to use it for intuitive watercolor. It won't be an issue. I'm spritzing. Let me move my okay. Move my water on this side, and then I'm gonna rub it in. Make sure you, all your paper is covered. As it starts to absorb, add a little more water by spray or brush. This is wet on wet technique. Okay, in watercolor, we start with our lightest color first, only because if I put a darker color on top of this, you won't be able to see it in watercolor. The yellow will be gone, and you can't put yellow on top of a dark color in watercolor. It'll turn the color up. It'll mix with the color underneath. Okay. So just think of yellow as the sunshine. So wherever you want light, just play, play with your light. I'm just going to play with light wherever just. And first I'm using a puddle so that it's very light at first. Then where I want to increase intensity, I can just play with a darker. So I'm kind of playing with the values of yellow, the faded lighter part and the darker more intense pigment areas. I don't have a plan. I'm just going to enjoy. Now, if your red has is more of a warm red, it will become orange quicker. Now, if I put yellow on top of this, of course, it, yellow and red make orange, but you won't get back that yellow underneath. Okay, I'm gonna play with different splatters. And make this quick so you can play. I have two reds because one of the reds is, um, oh, this is a warm red and this is a cool red. It has a little blue built in. So this should make a purple when I mix it with blue. So looks like this page is not wet enough. Ooh, there we go. So in playing first, you want to watch the color take off. It didn't take off so much in this one. But wet it again. Our first, ex our first play with intuitive paint should just be an exploration to see what wet on wet does. What does it do? Okay, 
Here is that orangish red. It won't make a purple so much, but it will make an orange. I have two waters here. Okay, so you get this, you get the drift. We're just going to create interesting either backgrounds or they can be abstract. But go ahead and at one point turn your work, look at it in different directions. So we're playing with both of these with primaries and the next two we're going to limit our palette even more. So if, if you want to, on one of them, you can try just letting the color flow all by itself on one. On the other, if you want to try to guide it slightly or more than that, it's up to you. If you guide it too much, it'll lose a lot of its feel. So by guiding it, you just kind of maybe steer it around. I try to do that minimally if I'm playing intuitively. Oh, this one almost looks like I dropped salt into it. It's really interesting. I, be I guess because I splattered more water, it made new water holes. Nice. Okay. So we've got these pretty backgrounds. If I want to drip, drips sometimes take over your painting. So you might just want to try it slightly. Okay, see I'm already stopping that. I like the little outline it did. It might sink underneath. But I'm not going to worry about a border so much now. And then you can take the excess off your tape when you drip it using a paper towel or this is an old cotton shirt okay so it does create an interesting edge sometimes or I'm gonna let this one run down a little huh? See what happens if it goes too far, sometimes it'll just look like mud. So if you go too far and you don't want it, you can just take your paper towel or cloth and dab it up. Or if you want like, just to, to make a light in a dark area while it's wet, you can do that. Okay, so when this dries, we can do that again in certain areas to make it more intense. We could do it now, but I want to also share how you can add to the intensity after it's dry. So if I add this now, as the paper's drying, it's going to spread a little, but not as much. So you're just going to learn about how little and how a lot the water, the paint spreads depending on your water. So 
So I'll try to move this a little into other areas. I like playing with the flow around my painting, okay? So now how pretty these would be for cards where you write on top of them. In fact, one of my students created beautiful card out of this and she sent it to me so I will show you that live okay let me stop